Now, under new laws, criminals will be forced to appear in the dock for their sentencing. Offenders who refuse to do so could face two years longer behind bars. The change follows a campaign run by Cheryl Corbell, the mother of nine-year-old Olivia, who was murdered when gunman Thomas Cashman chased another man into their home last year. Cashman refused to attend his hearing. We'll speak to Cheryl in just a moment. And uh, Cheryl joins us now alongside her cousin, Antonia Elverson. Um, first, we thank you for, for, for being here. You know, um, it's one of the few sentence hearings that... Uh, one of the few hearings that you can watch uh, on television. But a lot of people um, didn't know until Lucy Letby that your family have been at the heart of campaigning, have campaigning on this issue, face families. Now, I want to know, um, a lot of people will... Did you know um, that it, when it came to the time of sentencing, the killer of your little girl wouldn't be in court for you to direct the impact it had on you? No, I didn't know at all. Um, it was only when we, we got there. We didn't... It was that the family weren't there. We just thought they were running late. And then we got told that he, he wasn't coming up, that he had a choice. He had a choice. Now, yeah. there were actually legal powers uh, for the judge to force him to be there, but they were pretty impotent. Now, you've been campaigning to change the law. Um, talk to me a little bit about Liv Olivia's law. That's what it needs to be called and why it's so important for you to be able to face the person that took your little girl away. It's really important. Um, it's not an easy job to do them, do an Im a personal impact statement. Um, Top and bottom of it is the, the offender, the families and victims, they, their voice should be the last thing that they hear before they go down. Mm. And you've had this campaign, you started this back in June, I think, you know, the Face the Family, it's meant so much to you to get to this point. And then finally, as we saw, you find out this week when you're called to Downing Street that it has been successful, that this will be taken up and moved forward. How has that made you feel now? I am um, amazed up that it's, it's gotten changed. Um, it's all been a, a shock. I mean, we've only, we've only been campaigning for 10, 11 weeks. We didn't expect it to be this quick. Um, but we're all, we're all really pleased. And I'm right to say that you're going to continuing, you're going to continue with your campaign until the law is actually changed, because politician can, politicians can make promises, but it's about delivery. Um, you know, one of the difficulties is, is how you make this work. And um, there's some issue here, say people like let be people like um, the killer, let's call him that, Cashman, the killer of your little girl. You know, um, if he's facing a life sentence, may, for example, come into court and cause disruption. Um, and people out there will look at a family like yours and say, you know, what benefit to you would that be if you had to stand there um, with him in court, causing you perhaps more trauma? C can you understand that? Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Um, so uh, what's the response? Would you nevertheless want to come to court and look him in the eye and tell him about the impact that this has had on all of you and, of course, the community? No. Yeah, the, the the impact is the pain he's caused. The pain we're still going through. It was, you can go through trial for 18 days, but having to listen to his voice, everything over again. Where's the family and the victims' voices? Mm -hmm. And that was our time to to tell him that, and we couldn't. And don't you think this is also a little bit, to say the least, about him wanting to exert control? over the proceedings. Absolutely. And what right do you think somebody like that should have? I don't the ability to control the... They shouldn't be allowed to have any control. We've, say, we've said and we will continue saying, from the moment they're found guilty, they shouldn't be allowed to have that human right, that choice, or be allowed to have that control. Mm. They have the control throughout the whole trial. It's their trial. Yeah. The very end is, is the victims and the victims' families. Mm. Now, I've been alongside um, people as they've written those victim impact statements. There's no language that brings Olivia back. There's no words that can do justice, nothing that can explain the impact that this has had on you. What's it like sitting down to write a statement like that? Horrendous. What would you... Horrendous. Horrendous? Yeah. 
it's not something that's done right. quick over a matter of weeks, days, four, five hours in a day, having mm -hmm. to, to break because I'm just totally exhausted. And what does it do to you to sit there? As I said, I've listened to people who have been in this situation. Help us understand it. It's, every, it's all them feelings that have that come out. Mm. But in a sense, it helped me mm -hmm. because all them feelings came out. Um, I think it'd be a total different story if all them feelings were still, still stuck there. And how are you now? Mm. Because obviously it was the 22nd of August, wasn't it, last year that this happened, that you lost your beautiful daughter. I know that you marked the occasion, didn't you, as a, as a family. How, how do you feel now that it's one year on? No different from the day it happened. Um, and it will continue like that. Yeah. Um, although it's been 12 months, it still feels like yesterday. You know, there's no such thing as closure, but there is something called justice. He's gone to prison, but there's another element, the essential emotional element of you staring that person in the face and directing what happened to you at him. Um, and happily, most people won't know what that means. What does it mean to you? What would it have meant for you to look at the person that took your daughter's life and tell him of the impact it's had? In your words, she had amazing qualities and knew what she wanted in life. She did. She said from the day she was born, she's been here before. She knew what she, want, she wanted. She had her own mind. She may only have been a nine. The whole life just gone. Mm. Um, sorry. It's the That's whole okay. family's life. The pain doesn't just go away because it's 12 months later. We have to live with this forever. And how has it helped, in a sense, having this campaign that now you hope in her name will make a big difference to other families who will get their chance? to speak directly to the offender, to, to say to them how it's affected them? We, we really do hope it works, that no other family have got to go through what we went through. Um, theirs is the, the last voice that they hear. It's, it's one thing listening to counsel explaining what, what's gone on, what's happened, and, and the, the, the pain is completely different when it comes from the victim or the families. Um, you can hear that emotion and the pain coming from the families. So the hope is that Olivia's law is, is passed. And so that... Hopefully. And did Rishi Sunak give you an indication that that, that would happen, that it would be called Olivia's law? What did he say to you when you met him? Uh, I did ask if it would be called Olivia's law. Um, and they agreed, yeah, it should be. Um, but they need to cross T's and dot I's and hopefully they can, it's able to be done. Well, I suspect there'll be, thanks to your courage, uh, millions of people out there who will be supporting everything you have to say in memory of Olivia. And exactly as you say, we talk a lot and we should about the rights of defendants, but the rights of victims and victims' families are essential yeah. too. Yeah. Thank you so much for your courage in coming on and talking about this. Thank makes you. a huge, huge you know, it difference. It must have been hard for you this morning, but thank you. Thank you. Well done on the campaign.